Welcome back. Today we're going to learn how to solve the 4x4 Rubik's Cube using the easiest method. Before I begin, I just wanted to mention that before you can solve the 4x4, you're going to need to be able to solve the 3x3. So, if you don't know how to solve this yet, visit my page. I have easy tutorials on it as well as advanced methods. But just know that before you watch this video, you should already be able to solve the 3x3. First, let's go over some 4x4 basics. So you've probably realized this is going to be a little bit more difficult than the 3x3. So as you can see, there are four centerpieces on each side as opposed to the 3x3, which only has one. Uh, this means you're going to need to learn a few more letters so that you know how to read algorithms. So on a 3x3, if you saw R, you would know turn the right side clockwise. On this, if you see R, only turn the outer layer. If you saw a lowercase r, you would turn the next layer in. So you see, if this is r, this is lowercase r. If you saw an uppercase r and a lowercase r next to each other, that means turn both at once. You will actually generally see that last one where you have both at once most of the time, just because it's easier to turn two at once than it is to just turn one layer. So the method we're going to be learning today is called the reduction method. So our goal is to reduce the 4x4 into a 3x3. So here as you have seen, I've already done a few of the steps. So I've gotten my centers together and I've gotten my edges paired up. So now all that's really left is a 3x3. So this is your goal. Then at this point, you can just solve it like a normal 3x3, pretending that this is one edge and this is one center. The first step of the reduction method is to get one center. I'm going to start with white, so I'd suggest you start with white as well so that you can follow along. So there's going to be four white pieces around the cube that you're going to have to put all on the same face. This part doesn't really have any algorithms. I like to put two together and two together, and then I can just put all four together. That step is really simple. Now our next step is going to be to get the opposite side. So you're going to have to know that on a normal color scheme, white is going to be opposite yellow. So you're going to need, to need to remember that yellow is going to be on the top. But as you can see, if we try to put pieces in, well now we've messed up our white. So now we're going to have to do some critical thinking. So if I put it up, see how I just put this piece up. Now I need to clear a path so that I can bring this back down. So let's review that again. I bring it up, I clear a path, then I can fix my center. All right, so now there's one more piece to get in. I could even bring this down and then purposefully put it in the path so that when I fix, I can get this last center. So there you go, that's the first step. Our next step is going to be to get the remaining four centers. So this is where the color scheme is really gonna come into play. As you've seen, I have white here and yellow here, which means that while I'm solving these last four centers, I can't mess these up. So all I'm going to move is these layers and then the top layer. So on a normal cube, I think the easiest way to remember it is red, white, blue. So no, if you have the white here, you'll have red then blue. Then the rest should come pretty easily. You should know that Red and orange drops at each other, blue and green are opposite each other, you know, like in the checkerboard pattern. So, since we have white here, let's start with our red center. So, I like to pair up two, and then I'll pair up another two, and then I just put two and two together, and then I have four. That step is really just logic. You can move any of the outer layers, as you can see, and you won't mess up your yellow or white, and then just put four together. So now, red, white, and blue, you know that this is gonna be blue. So, remember, anything you do, you're going to have to undo and then fix this red. What that means is, my first step would be to get this piece out so that I can make a bar. So, I'll bring this up, clear a path, bring this down. So I just do something, but then I have to bring the red back down. And even when I'm up here and I can't even see the red, I just know that I have to bring it back down to fix the red here. So now that I have blue bar here, blue bar here, 
I'll want to put these together. So as you can see, if I put them together, there's no path I can clear. This means I'm going to have to do something extra. I'm going to push this bar out of the way. Then I'll clear a path. Then I can bring the bar that I pushed out of the way back in. So now we have red and blue. So there's two left. So you know that blue is opposite green and red is opposite orange. So this is gonna be orange, this is gonna be green. So people have made algorithms to do all of these in one step when you only have two centers left, but I think you can figure it out on your own just by using logic. And when you have something like this, just know, push the bar out of the way, clear a path, then bring it back. And if you build the fifth center, the sixth center will of course be built as well because that's the only place where the last pieces can be. So now as you can see, we built all the centers and now it's time to go to edge pairing. Okay, so our next goal is to get all of the edges paired with the other edge that's the same color. So for instance here, I need to find the other green and red edge. Oh, here it is. So you can move these outer layers or mess up your center until you have them next to each other. So we actually wanna have one on top and one on bottom. So as you can see, I have both of these on top. So I guess I'll just move this around. There we go. I have red and green here, red and green here. Now this is how you're gonna pair them up. So if you just pair them like this, well you got these together, but then you've messed up all your centers. So what we're gonna have to do is put them together and then using this face here, Look on the top and see if there's any that are broken. This is our first edge, so all the edges around the cube still aren't with their pair. So we'll bring this up and then we'll replace it with a broken edge. Then when we bring it down, we can just fix these centers and we don't have to worry about breaking an edge. So now we have one. Let's do another example. So here's blue and white. Here's the other blue and white. So I have one on the top one on the bottom. I'm going to put them together and I'm going to use this face, replace this with the broken one. You see, it is possible for me to put this in, but now I would break it. So I don't want to do that. I want to put it in with this broken piece. Then I can fix my centers. Continue this process until you have either zero or two edges left. I'll show you how to do the case when you have two edges left right now. Okay, so now I've gotten all the edges on the cube all paired up except for these last two. So the problem you might have run into is if you put these together, you'll have no more broken edges to replace with because there's only two left. So you're gonna have to do a special algorithm. So instead of positioning these one on top, one on bottom, we're actually gonna pair them up with their partner so you see I have orange and green, orange and green on top, white and green, white and green on bottom. So these two need to go together, these two need to go together. Now we're gonna do this algorithm. U wide prime, R, U, R prime, F. R prime, F prime, R. Then we'll do one more U wide. So now, these two edges that were formerly mismatched, now we got them together. So essentially all we did was slice through, then we did a few steps, then we sliced back, and then we made the last two. Here's one tip for edge pairing. You don't have to do this, but it will make your edge pairing easier, and it will make it easier to find edges around the cube. So what I would do is I would first try to find all your white edges and pair them up and then before you even have finished the cube begin making your white cross. So what this will do is now that you've made the white cross none of your edges will be on the bottom now. So now it's really easy to just find edges because all of them will either be around here or on the top layer you'll never have to turn towards the bottom again. This also helps because once you're done, you already have the white cross in place and then 
you can just go to the next step. So now that you have all the edges paired up, you can start solving it like a three by three. Now you're not quite done. There's still a few problems that you could run into. I'm gonna go over these now. The first problem you might run into is on your last layer cross. So you might have weird cases that you haven't seen before, like this one where only one edge is flipped up. And even with trying to fix them, you just still keep getting one edge away from having a cross. So this is called a parity error. These only happen on big cubes. This isn't possible on a three by three, but you're gonna need to use a special algorithm to solve this. So this is a long algorithm, but it's very helpful to learn. And I mean, you really need to learn it because otherwise at this point, you would just have to mess up the cube and start all over. So with holding the edge you wanna flip right here in front of you, this is the algorithm that we're gonna do. R wide two. B2, U2, L wide, U2, R wide prime, U2, R wide, U2, F2, R wide, F2, L wide prime, B2, R wide 2. So now that edge in front of us, we've flipped just that edge and we've kept the rest of the cube fine. So now you can continue solving it. So I realize this is sort of a long and difficult algorithm, but it's going to be very helpful to learn in the future because uh, otherwise you'd really just have to start over. So this eliminates having to do that. There's one more parity error that you can run into on the four x four. This is when you're on your last step and you've oriented your corners. And now you just need to switch around these edges. But even when you try to switch around the edges, you just keep getting cases you haven't seen before where maybe two need to switch or maybe all of them need to move in a circle. There's a couple different ones that you can recognize as a PLL parity, which is permutation last layer parity. But all of them can be solved by doing this algorithm. So here's the algorithm. It's actually quite short. So small r2, u2, small r2, u wide 2, small r2, u wide 2. So what this does is it flips the edge in front of you with the edge behind you. So even if you had a case that didn't look exactly like two edges that need to be swapped, Maybe you add something like this, all four of these. Still, by doing this algorithm, you'll just fall back into a case you've seen, like this is a uh, U perm. And then you can just solve it like a three by three or whatever method you use to solve it, and then you're done. There is a advanced method for the four by four. It's called the Yao method. However, I would not suggest learning this until you've mastered the reduction method, since you'll need to know it pretty well before you even start the Yao method. Well, there you have it. That's how to solve the 4x4 in the easiest way possible. The 4x4 is a good stepping stone to bigger cubes like 5x5 and beyond, so once you get better at this reduction method, the rest of them will be pretty easy. I hope this video helped you, and for the future, good luck.